The Combat Achievement Diary, a testament to a player's problem solving, spatial reasoning, and overall skill in old school RuneScape. My goal is to complete the diary in the lowest in-game time. This is the Zuckhelm Any% speedrun, starring GM to GMs. Ninety-five Slayer. The longest grind this account will ever see, and it's finally over. This was hard required, as Alchemical Hydra is on the combat achievements, but it was also a convenient excuse to train our combat stats. We had a bit more blood veils than expected, but everything is about where it needs to be. Today's agenda is unlocking the rest of Gilinor that we purposely left locked due to what we discussed in episode 6. But first, I want to secure that Hydra task. It's approximately a 1 in 12.5 chance to be assigned them from Konar, and we have 15 skips at our disposal. And thankfully, this didn't turn into a Turiel skipping festival. We'll be holding on to that for later. Now to the other side of gameplay. There's one skill requirement that I grinded out just before I finish Slayer, and that's 55 runecrafting. There's one combat task to kill a Basilisk Knight, and that requires Fremenic Exiles. So there's 45, 47, 49, 51, 52, and 55 runecrafting. But I need a few levels for something important next episode. So there's 56 runecrafting and change. Now begins the last line of required quests, starting with Devious Mines, which needs a large pouch from the Abyss. Man, that was quick. It was like, what, four kills? Now let's knock over all those quests. Devious Mines, Pirate Pete's Subquest, Cabin Fever, Stealing a Brain, and Contact. So I'm out here getting a world first. No one else has ever gotten 98 range from this quest lamp, ever. And no one can prove me wrong. Now here's where things get satisfying. Ever since the changes to quest rewards, almost every Master and Grandmaster quest gives copious amounts of agility experience. Keep in mind, we're currently 65, and we've only done two laps for the purpose of the Western Hard Diary. That's beneath Cursed Sands for 50,000 agility experience, and 66 agility. Next we have the RuneScape Classic line, starting with the free-to-play finale, Dragon Slayer. After about 8 minutes of talking and running around, it's time to take on the difficult quest boss known as Elvarg. The Karasi Sword has been in the game for a little while, so let's put it to work. Call that a boss? Guess you should have watched episode 7. She would have known that I'm the boss. Hard quest completed. Now for Hero's Quest. In this section, we're gonna need help from another player. And I think it's time for an introduction that's been long overdue. Meet One Click Prif. I made this account a few months prior to the start of this series as a way to field test my route to the fastest Zuckhelm. Additionally, I wanted to make a med level PKer build and the stat line was practically identical, so two birds, one stone. He's made quite a few appearances in the series so far, and a noteworthy one can be seen if you hark back to an earlier episode. This was for Shield of Arav, a direct prerequisite for Hero's Quest, where you must pick a gang to join, and it's time to make use of him again. You know, I think this is the first time Grip has been killed by a Shadow of Tumekin. Between the 98 range earlier, killing Elvarg with the Karazi, and now this, I'm just stacking up world first today. Now let's take a moment to talk about how smart, yet stupid I am, at the same time. You'll notice One Click Prif is having some trouble finding the candlesticks. That should be in the chest. Well, guess what? There was one in my bank the whole time. I kept a spare so I could just give it to GM to GMs after the Kill Grip flag was set. But I forgore I did that months ago. After that silly mishap, that's Hero's Quest completed. Now to the RuneScape Classic finale, Legends Quest. 
Now listen, I know we're updating graphics and bringing old school RuneScape into the future. But if you touch this cutscene where you spawn the Binding Book, I swear I w- You ever seen someone Karazi spec this quest boss? Yeah, didn't think so. Four world firsts. And now the Agility Care Package. 120,000 Agility Experience, getting us 68 Agility. And now we're a legend. Time for Dragon Slayer 2. You know what's crazy? This plugin is still sanctioned by Jagex. You know what's even crazier? Bob the Cat can walk all the way to this spot. Now I have the Vorkath fight coming up. And I went to make the salve, but I found out I somehow forgot to route this in. Oh well. That's Tarn's Diary. Now we have the Vorkath amulet. Those poor dragons done for. We didn't even get the little spawn. Easy fight. More stuff I haven't done? Fun fact. If you gain access to the Whirlpool, Slayer Masters can assign you Water Fiends. What a great reward! I feel like Nintendo about to sue somebody. Alright, let's go kick Galvex's butt. And that's Dragon Slayer 2, giving us 70 mining and 69 agility. And 93 strength. For our next quest, we need 66 fire making. Now before anyone tells me off for not doing it earlier, listen, they made Muspa require a new quest. And this wasn't part of the first plan. Okay, so we're one inventory of U logs away from 66, so let's pay one last visit to our old stomping grounds. And with the citizens of Varrock reminded who their daddy is, there is 66 fire making. Now we can do the My Arm quest. Quickly though, something else that Dragon Slayer 2 did for us is unlock Ferocious Gloves. So the error of the regen bracelet is no more. Who needs Barrow's Gloves anyway? So here's the quest that needed runecrafting. We gotta have a self-reflection segment with our pet rock, beat the hell out of some reptile whatevers, play Mastermind, win the game, and be the first person to use the Karasi spec versus the final boss of Harry Potter 2, the Chamber Pot of Secrets. And there's the Basilisk quest, giving us 58 runecrafting. Okay, we got the Ferocious Gloves, so let's see if we can get this Hespori time. Dude. You serious? Guess we wait for 99 strength. Alright, before we tackle the last few quests, there is something I want to knock out. And that's the easy and medium combat achievements. Starting off with the Crazy Archaeologist. So there's only two mechanical tasks for this guy. And that's use an overhead and just don't get hit by the books. 10kc and 25kc. Now the Chaos Fanatic has an annoying endurance task. Not the one we just did, but the next one. Also, hi to this guy. You have to kill 10 without drinking prayer potions and such. But they said nothing about using the altar. There's the endurance. And there's 25kc. King Black Dragon. His tasks are easy. And he's even got one like Skatizo and the Black Knight Titan. Check it out. More intended gameplay. 10kc in the instance. And 25kc didn't get recorded somehow. Sorry. Beat a Wyvern. Beat a Kurask. Worm Guy. Fire Dude. 77 Slayer Monster. Lizard Man. Barrow's Time. There's this task where you can't get meleeed ever. So we're just putting them on ice. Oh, apparently killing Darok is a task or something. That spec out Carol. Man, never lucky. So fun fact. If you're neurotic like me, and speedrunning a Zuckhelm, you actually don't have to kill anything to make your Barrow's KC go up. You can just rush to the chest, open it, and the number goes up. 
That's a Barrow's Run with zero prayer. 10 chests, 25 chests. We're out of here. Free to play boss time. I think these ones are kind of fun, honestly. They both have tasks that force you to dress up in nostalgia. And if you don't think that's cool, then we have beef. We'll start with Tanner Dino. There's a task to let him die to poison or venom. That's the click fast task. Now we wait for the venom to do its thing. And there's, uh, every other task, <laughs> I guess. Okay, champion time. I could have gone in Zamitrim, but personally, the regular rune just hits different for me. There we go, free to play task, and 5kc. Let's sprint over to Mr. Mammal's crib. Alright, that's free to play, and I guess these two tasks just did themselves. So here's a mini little tip. Any task that requires you to kill a monster when it's frozen, do the last hit as a freeze. Too long didn't read. The game checks if it's frozen when the death animation is completed, and not when its HP actually hits zero. Okay, we're an Obor champion. Let's get out of here. So, embarrassing confession. I somehow didn't finish KBD. There's a task where you need to beat him while he's praying melee, but because of how the game code works, it only checks your overhead when the death animation ends, kind of like that freezing Obor thing I just mentioned. Yeah, that's a little embarrassing. KBD actually done now. Next up, Deranged Archaeologist. And you know we're doing a birdhouse run on the way there. This dude's exactly like Crazy Archaeologist, except he killed a friend a few years back. That's his only two mechanic tasks. 10 and 25 KC. Now we've got the Giant Mole. This little pancake actually has more than two tasks. So we're starting off with Darok, since there's a task where you need to kill it with only four instances of damage. And there we go, easy as pancake. And two other tasks as well. Cool. And there's another task. Now for the rest of these, we have a team spread out across the dungeon. Since this little guy likes to dig around when you hit him under half HP, running around can waste some time. Also you'll notice we've done a wardrobe change. If you miss with magic, the mole doesn't run away, but if you miss with ranger melee, he can decide to run off. That's 10. And 25. Another one knocked over. Now on to Seracnus. This little critter has a few mechanic tasks, so we're taking it on solo to make sure it goes over smoothly. And there's those three taken care of, so let's call in the flash mob. Oh my god, look at all the spiders. I have never seen Seracnus like this before. 10 kill count, wow, he's so good. And 25. Seracnus, squashed. Time for a blast from the past. It's been episodes in the making. This is what you were made for, dumb idiot 3. The final Temporos round. And we have to take it on alone. So if you've never done Temporos solo before, the method is really simple. Just remember 17, 19, 19, 2. Cook all the food, then load the cannon in those increments, harpoon the Tempe when he's down, and in the third and final round, achieve combat. That's a billion points, so that's Temporos green logged. I can't believe I had to bond four accounts to race for Angler Outfit just for this stupid boss. And now the final task, the most arduous one yet. Defeat a greater demon with the arc light. And that completes the easy and medium combat diaries. As for the reward, we get five daily teleports to the God Wars dungeon, which will be useful in the future. But more relevant now is the 15,000 experience lamps, which we're putting onto runecrafting, giving us exactly 59. That will allow us to craft two cosmic runes from one essence. Now back to my favorite activity in the whole game, speedrunning quests. One of the more lighthearted things I love about this game is how self-aware the devs are. They actually took the Grand Exchange e-dating dance and put it in the game. And with that, we've completed my arm quest line, and more importantly, completed the agility skill, putting us at 70 without having actually trained it. Now for the Grumbler quest, the secrets of the north. And there we go. Quest completed for a bonus agility level, and... I'm not even gonna say it. Since we're still geared up, I want to go back and kill the Grumbler once, as it is a hard combat task, and that's a tier I'm going to need done in the near future. But before that, it's time for the end of an era. The last birdhouse run. Feels like just yesterday that we built our first one. And there we go. 70 Hunter. The final requirement for the Song of the Elves. Now back to the Grumbler. There are more tasks I need to do here, but I'll be doing them another time. And that's the first kill, what do we get? What? Charged? Ice? That's gotta be so rare, what's the drop rate on that? 
Well, that's a hard task done. And all these tasks that don't really matter too much right now. Now it's time for the last required quest on this account. Let's get to work. long last, that Song of the Elves completed. The path has been paved, the map unlocked, and the game has been set. All bosses and content are now unlocked. Nothing is holding us back. This concludes Season 2, and opens the floodgates for the climax of our journey. I can't wait to see you all for Season 3. Thank you for watching today. And now a word from today's video sponsor. Boaty. I'm going to teleport out and just lose some efficiency. And if a tree video, aka a cold one, goes live on YouTube, and you're playing RuneScape, you should also teleport out, lose your efficiency, and prioritize watching the video. Which, when concluded, and is the completed GM to GM in the shortest time possible, quite possibly might be one of the best RuneScape series that we ever get to watch, when we get to watch it all back and binge watch every single episode. Ladies and please subscribe to A Cold One on YouTube. Please also click the sponsor link in the description if there is one. Alternatively, leave a nice comment about how this series you're currently watching is genuinely very, very refreshing.